What is good with y'all, man? It's your boy Unseen coming back at y'all with another fucking video. So today, bruh, today we talking my introduction to rap music, my introduction to hip hop. We're going to be talking about hip hop a lot on this channel. And I thought I'd just get y'all up to speed on where I stand with hip hop and let y'all in on my my experience with it just to lend you some of my credibility so you don't think I'm a fraud and I just randomly started to get into this genre. I've been a part of this culture, like I've invested all of my time into this culture. I had that playing in my ear my entire fucking life. That's what we're getting into, it was my first, my first memories of hip hop. All right, hola, 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 hola. As I was editing this video, I realized this is also a timeline of my experience with rap music over the past 12 years. It's not just an introduction, my first memories. It is a timeline. And on top of that, throughout this video, you're gonna hear me mention a lot of fucking artists. So, which means I'm gonna leave out a bunch more that I think are important. But the artists that I chose to include in this video, in my opinion, were the most important to each of those years from my perspective at that time. So forgive me if I leave out any artists that you think were more important. I was just merely doing it from my perspective. 2006, 2007, I was on a camping trip with my family and my older brother, he had the OG iPod. I was sitting in the car with him. I was probably six years old, bro, six years old. He gave me an earbud and I just listened to some music with him. First song, I still remember this to this day. To this day. To this day. To this day. The first song I ever heard was 50 Cent in the club off of Get Rich or Die Trying, my favorite 50 Cent album. That was the introduction to hip hop for me. Obviously getting into the rest of that album with Many Men, 21 Questions, I just fell in love with 50 Cent's catalog. I fell in love with his sound and everything about that style of rap music at the time. Go to you know 2007, 2008, that was also another special year. I'm trying to think of my earliest memories here. So going to school with my brother, our parents were so gracious enough to let us control the radio. So we got to play what we wanted. Radio really played a big part in all of my, the artists I got into as a kid because I obviously didn't own a iPod or a cell phone or an iPhone because there weren't any at the time. So the radio was all we had. And luckily the radio was actually good because those artists were putting out quality music. My brother was the oldest, so he played a lot of rap music. That was when I first heard Lil Wayne and Kanye West. I heard, because in 2008, that was when the Carter Three came out, so I heard fucking Lollipop, like I heard all of those songs off of that album, and I came to know Lil Wayne as my favorite artist at that time. On top of that, with Kanye West, you I just hear on the radio too, and Lil Wayne, Kanye West, like Good Life on the Radio, Stronger, that whole graduation album. Hearing that was special because that introduced me to two artists that are legends, two legends, man. They were so influential on, on rap and how it is today. 2009, 2010, that was when I got into Eminem. I found him from, surprisingly enough, from the trailer to Modern Warfare 2. Shout out to my gamers out there, man. If y'all remember the Modern Warfare 2 trailer, Eminem, Till I Collapse with Nate Dogg, that was the, that was the song for the trailer. Till I collapse, I'm spilling these rats, long as you feel them to the day that I drop, you'll never say that I'm not killing them. From that, I started to hear more and more Eminem on the radio, and I'd hear his older songs, and that was when I had an iPod at the time, so I was able to download songs onto there from iTunes. So uh, obviously his old songs, like 3AM, Sing for the Moment, pretty much all of his catalog, that was when I really started to get into Eminem. It was kind of relieving to see a white dude in rap just because it made it feel like I could like actually listen to this culture and not be rejected. Also in 2010, we all know Drake. Drake? <laughs> Drake? That's the highlight of the decade, 2010. That was the highlight of the 2010s was Drake. He ran that entire decade, man. And at that time, you couldn't hate on Drake. He was putting up real quality music and he was able to mix it up. He was in incorporating a good mix, a, a good balance of rap and singing, rap and R&B. He was putting out even amounts. He wasn't just one-sided and that's what 
made people fall in love with him because the early 2000s rap and R&B hand in hand, man, those were hand in hand with each other. They would, you know, collaborate all the all the time. So to see one artist who can do both, that was so revolutionary with Drake. He was everybody's favorite artist at the time. So had to mention him. I got onto him from the radio. We'll go to 2012 or so. That was when I first started to find music for myself. Cause that was when I had an iPhone. I was able to, you know, search on the internet, start downloading music, listen to my friends, put me on the music, I'd download those. The first rapper I really got into by myself was Mac Miller, man. He was the first one I found by myself at the time with, you know, kids and uh, Best Day Ever, Blue Slide Park. That was my first like artist that I could say I found on my own, really, without help or the radio or anything. Rest in peace, Mac Miller, man. He did so much for me and Frankly, in 2012, the backpack rap really took over with, you know, him, Joey Badass, Wiz Khalifa. It was such a chill time for the genre, and frankly, it was just a breath of fresh air. It was all about just smoking weed and chilling. It wasn't about, like, beefs. That's what was so good about it, too. Social media wasn't as big. The networking aspect of rap music was, you know, by ear. Yeah, it was, social media did influence it, but not on the level we see now with all of these blogs and everything reporting first what is going to drop you had to just almost kind of hear it for hear it for yourself or just have someone put you on i love 2012 through 2013 for and i have to mention this too chief keef the whole my whole entire middle school was on chief keef bro he really changed a lot for rap and i was having a tough time getting into him because i was so bar heavy and on on like you know hardcore like bring the bring the fucking bars bring the 16s not like the trap shit the drill rap now looking back i'm realizing this dude really changed a lot one more group i really have to mention in 2013 was odd future odd future changed a lot for rap and i got into them because skateboarding was so popular at the time i was into odd future everybody down the block was into them it was so cool to be a teenager when this was going on odd future was so young it was almost like seeing your age group make it and surface into the rap scene. Go to about 2015, rap music really started to change. That was where I really like consumed conscious rap and boom bap like at a crazy rate. That's all I was about in that in that 2014, 2015 time. And obviously at 2015, we see Travis Scott with the auto tune. And I hated on that shit so hard. This dude is unique because he was one of the, he was the first one that really like used auto-tune effectively, but I was so close-minded to that, that to where I didn't really appreciate how good of an artist he was until about, you know, 2017. When Antidote came out, I only liked the second half of that song where he was rapping, not where he was singing the hook and crazy instrumental. I was into the rapping part. That's how close-minded I was. Once it came to about 2017, that was when obviously I got into Joey Badass. I found, well, I knew Joey Badass for a while, but I got into Pro Era, Flatbush Zombies, Underachievers. And I was five years late on that shit, sadly. But I dove into all their all their projects. Once again, heavy on the bars. I love the bars. But I started to have a change of heart towards rap music. I started to see that in 2017, the sound was changing. Young Thug was, was really popping. The trap style was really taking over. And I started to appreciate that. I started to accept that, you know, this is the way rap is gonna be. I do think there's quality music in, in that style of rap. It's just, it's all perspective. It all depends on what you're looking for at the end of the day. I was not looking for some catchy melodies. I was looking for bars. But once I could appreciate the catchy melodies and how unique the instrumentals were, how unique voices were, I could start to really enjoy that style of rap that I now come to like a lot. Now in 2020 with the mix between bars and trap, you call it mumble rap, but the mix between those, I try to keep that balance a lot because like I said, I started to be more open-minded. I had to make a change for myself and being more open-minded meant I had to expand my music taste. So now I can appreciate the other sides of rap that aren't so focused on 
bars and double entendres and triple meanings. I can appreciate just some surface level turn up shit because it sounds good and it's just so unique in that aspect because nobody's ever done that. That's pretty much my introduction, my introduction to hip hop along with the rest of my life and how hip hop you know, changed me. It's changed so much for me. The way I talk, listen to the way I talk. If you know me in real life, the way I talk, I don't talk like a fucking white person. I don't talk like a proper white person. I talk, use a bunch of slang. I use a lot of that. And that was what hip hop did to me. It, it made me, it, it felt like I knew their, I know their culture. Obviously I don't experience the same things that, you know, black people, African Americans experience in their lives with, you know, the stuff that they portray in their music. But what hip hop did to me is it made me more empathetic to that and realized that this is people's stories. And that was where I realized hip hop is not lying. Hip hop is the truth. Hip hop made me look at the world from a perspective of someone that isn't privileged, someone that isn't white. It looked made me look at the world from a perspective of somebody that's in the minority, somebody that doesn't have it all. And from a young age, that was the only thing I had playing in my ear was hip hop. So it's almost like that's the only culture I ever knew. That's really how much it did to me. It saved my fucking life. H-I-P-H-O-P-S-A-D-E-D -E me. Go back to my Capital Steve's video, like hit the genre has saved my life. That's how impactful this style of music is to me. And frankly, to a lot of other people out in the world too. But yeah, man, thought I'd bring that video to y'all. This is just my introduction. Had to let y'all know where I'm coming from when it comes to the way I approach rap music because rap music is gonna be an important subject on this channel. If y'all like the video, be sure to drop a like on this, comment, subscribe, share it around. You know the deal, but yeah, man, I fuck with y'all. It's been your boy Unseen. I'll catch y'all in the next one, man. Peace.